that's what this is all about, is the fight for the control of the water. The water crisis in the scenic Klamath Basin has raged on for a hundred years and counting. Just about everything that can go wrong with Western water law has gone wrong in the Klamath. As a power company, we are not in the business of removing dams. We are in the business of generating power. You can't be a Karuk without salmon. Sometimes the right decision isn't always a popular decision. Can an historic compromise restore peace, fish, and clean water to this vast river community? Stay with us for a special presentation of The Klamath Basin, a restoration for the ages. Hello, I'm Frances Fisher. I'm standing above the Iron Gate Dam, one of several hydroelectric dams along the Klamath River. Now, the disputes about this river are epic, but that's changing as area fishermen, farmers, tribes, environmental groups, and the power company that owns this dam are coming together to craft what many believe will be a lasting piece to the watershed. But before we get to that, let's listen to a little history. The Klamath Basin along the California-Oregon border gets its name from the Native American word Klamath, which means swiftness. The basin lays claim to majestic beauty and abundance of natural resources and more Bigfoot sightings than just about anywhere else in the country. But the crown jewel of the watershed does indeed exemplify effortless speed. The Klamath River is so swift, in fact, that early entrepreneurs envisioned harnessing her momentum to create power. The Klamath Basin is a relatively isolated area. It's far from the power centers of both Sacramento and, and Salem, and it's an area that's relatively lightly settled up until the early 20th century. But even before early settlers arrived, an ancient people known as the Klamath tribes thrived in this region for centuries. The river starts here in our homeland. All of the rivers, they all flow down eventually into Klamath Lake here, and Klamath Lake is where Klamath River starts. Salmon's been here since we've been here. You know, the creator uh, placed salmon here, uh, and it, it was put here uh, for the subsistence uh, of our people. Uh, we've always harvested that, that fish from these rivers here. Uh, it's our most important resource that we have is, is fish. And it's the reason I'm standing here today. If it wasn't for fish, if it wasn't for salmon, if it wasn't for chawam, I wouldn't be here today. My people wouldn't have survived here. In the early 1900s, the Secretary of the Interior authorized a federal water project in the basin. This act would give rise to a promising new industry across the West, irrigated agriculture. The Klamath Reclamation Project was authorized by Congress in 1905, and development began at that point. Part of the settlement of the West is to develop farmlands. In 1946, this spinning pickle jar whirled the hopes and aspirations of 1,300 veterans of World War II. The place is Klamath Falls, Oregon, where former servicemen and their families tensely wait as a drawing is held for the first public land grant since the war ended. The first number is called. Uh, there's a, a lot of land is drained, several hundred thousand acres are available for farming, and that really changes the ecosystem, really changes the flow of water. In addition to the irrigation uh, dams that were placed in the upper basin, uh, in between the 1920s and the 1950s, there were a series of hydropower dams put in, and those also very much changed the flow of the river. They needed cheap power. They needed power to fuel the industrialization of the Northwest. And the predecessor companies that used to, uh, that, that built these dams were adhering and following the lead of the two states and the federal government in building these dams. This is the story of the four hydroelectric dams along the Klamath River, built not for irrigating thirsty crops, not for containing floodwaters, but for generating electricity needed by the growing population. Collectively, 
the dams produce enough electricity to power roughly 70,000 households.